Hey everybody, uh, so in this video we're going to walk through uh, setting up a Firestore database in a Stencil JS and Ionic application. So I released a video last week where we talked about uh, setting up Firebase authentication in an Ionic and Stencil JS project. And so this is going to pick up uh, exactly where that left off. So uh, if you haven't already been through that video or you don't already know how to uh, set up the Firebase SDK and get some authentication working, uh, you might want to go look at that video first and then come back to this one. Uh, the main focus of this video is taking what we have so far and then adding Firestore to that. So setting up the database in the Firebase console here and then also doing what we need to do in our code to make that work. So if you've completed the last tutorial, you should uh, have access to a Firebase project like this one. It should have authentication set up for anonymous users. Uh, it doesn't have to be anonymous. You can use something else if you like. Uh, but what we'll need to do at this point is come into our console again for the project and go to the database section. And it's here that we're going to set up our Firestore database. And so you'll find a few different things on this page and some information. Uh, the main thing is that we have Cloud Firestore at the top here. Uh, or you can also choose to set up the old uh, real-time Firebase database. So there's content out there already from people who can explain the difference between Firestore and the real-time Firebase database better than I can. So if you want to know what the difference is, I'd recommend going and finding a video like that. Uh, the main point is that for most people, it's probably Firestore that you want to be using. Uh, if it is the real-time database that you want to use, uh, you'll probably know and you'll probably have a specific reason for using that. Uh, the fact that it's real-time doesn't affect our ability to get real-time data in Firestore. Uh, you can build something that has live updates without using uh, the old uh, real-time database. Uh, although I'm not specifically walking through the functionality for building a live chat application, uh, this is actually the reason that I'm using Firebase at the moment is for building a live chat application with Firestore. So uh, although I'm not walking through it in this tutorial, that's what you could use this whole setup for. So we'll click on create database to create our Firestore database. And then immediately you're going to uh, get prompted to make a choice regarding Firestore security rules. And so what we're actually going to do here is start in test mode. Wow, my blind just flew up. Okay, that's all sorted now, hopefully. Um, okay, so talking about Firestore security rules, uh, you're going to have to choose either lock mode or test mode. Uh, we're going to use test mode, but it's very important to understand that this means that anybody would be able to interact with your database. They could add whatever data they want, read it, delete it, do whatever. Uh, so you definitely don't want to use this in a production scenario. Uh, it is good for just sort of playing around, having fun, testing things, uh, which is why we're going to use it now. Uh, I'll probably save the actual setting up of Firebase security rules for another video. Uh, but just know that it is important to set these up before you go live uh, with a real production application. So we'll choose test mode and we will click enable. And after just a few uh, seconds, our database is set up. And so Firestore uses, uh, well, it's a document-based uh, no SQL database. And what that means for us is that we're not going to actually have to set up anything here. Uh, you can manually add some collections and those collections store documents. Uh, we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of how a document-based uh, no SQL database works just because that topic is too large to cover right now. Uh, one of the main points though is that we don't need to set up any kind of predefined schema. Uh, we can just start adding data to it. So although we can create a collection of say messages or users or whatever we want here, you don't actually need to set that up to begin with. And that doesn't mean that you can just store whatever you want. Obviously you need to have some kind of reasoning or structure behind the data you're actually uploading, uh, but it's just not a requirement to set that up beforehand like it is with say a, a more traditional uh, a relational database. So with that set up, we're basically uh, done with the Firebase console. Again, I'll point out, notice uh, here with the rules, it has this little exclamation mark to show that you know, we're in dangerous territory here that we have uh, loose rules that are going to allow our database to be interacted with by anyone. Uh, so again, just make sure you're not going live with that stuff. Okay, so now it's time to jump over into our project. So we've already uh, set up a lot of this stuff in the previous uh, video on this. 
And so this is our auth controller that we set up uh, that we were using to uh, authenticate anonymous users. And it also handled the initial configuration of our Firebase uh, setup. Uh, but I've actually added a, a new thing here, which you will have to add to your uh, auth controller as well. Uh, you'll notice I have this watch, uh, watch auth state uh, method here now. And so basically this is using the firebase.auth.onAuthState change to detect when uh, the user either logs in or logs out. And what we're going to do for our database in a moment is we're going to listen for when the user has logged in, when that auth state has changed. And we're going to use that to trigger a loading in the data from Firestore. So what this uh, method does is it allows us to pass in a handler function and that is going to allow us to pass some data back to whatever function we passed in whenever, uh, whenever the auth state changes. And so you'll see how we use that in just a moment. Uh, this is the sort of uh, scenario where I would typically use an observable. Uh, in this case, we don't have the RxJS library installed, uh, but if you wanted to, if you did have that installed, you could uh, instead just use expose some kind of observable here that's triggered when, whenever the auth state changes. And with that, we set up this detach listener, which basically just provides us with a, a method to uh, tell Firebase to stop listening for the auth state changes. And so we trigger that, say, when we logged out, for example. So again, the basic idea here is we listen for auth state changes. Uh, we're actually setting the user whenever that happens. And we also pass that user information back to the handler function that is passed into this method here. So now let's get into the actual database stuff. So to handle this, uh, I've set up another database controller, which is uh, just like our auth service. It's going to allow us to have a database service in our application. And you'll see I'm um, importing both of those into the root component and calling the init functions on both uh, to set those up. And so for this one, when it's initialized, it'll uh, set up a fi the Firestore database onto this.db. And then we're going to interact with that. Uh, much like the watch, what did I call that? Watch, uh, watch auth state. Uh, we're also setting up a watch messages. And this does basically the same thing, except rather than watching the authentication state, we're going to watch for new data uh, being added to our messages collection that will eventually exist in our Firestore database. So again, we set up this detached listener so we can stop listening when we want. And then we just call this.db. We want the messages collection and we're going to order that data by the date it was created. Uh, we're limiting it to 50, uh, 50 um, documents. And then we have the on snapshot method. And then basically every time that data changes, uh, when there's new data added to it, for example, uh, this is going to run here. And what we're doing basically is just building up an array of all the messages that are stored in that Firestore database. And then for each of those, we just push them into this array here. And then we pass that array back to the handler function that was passed in to watch messages. And so again, this is something you could use an observable for if you had that installed, uh, but this works also. And then we also have an add message uh, method set up here. So basically this will allow us to pass some message string into here, and this is going to handle creating a new document for us. And so you'll see we're saying this .db .collection, uh, messages add. So what that's actually going to do uh, in our Firestore database here, uh, if the messages collection doesn't already exist, it's going to create that automatically. And then it's going to add that document in here. And so we'll look at that working in just a little bit, uh, but that's the basic idea. And so the document we're supplying here uh, has a UID, which we're just setting to whatever the users, the currently logged in users ID is. Uh, a created field that says when it was created with a timestamp, uh, the actual message passed into this method, and then any display name that is set for that particular user, which if you're just using an anonymous user, they're not gonna have a display name unless you specifically set that. So that's all there is to this uh, database controller here. We just have a way to watch data in the Firestore database so we can get any new data that's added and pull that into our application. And we have uh, a way to add uh, documents to our collection. And so again, you have to make sure that these are imported into your root component here and we've initialized them and then we can make use of them uh, wherever we want in our application. So for demonstrating this, I just have a home page set up that's importing both services. Uh, typically, 
you know, you'd have a separate login page and then have the user log in, go to some other page. Uh, but we're just going to demonstrate this all on the one page. And so some of this is from the previous tutorial. We have this login method being called, which is going to use the uh, login anon method to authenticate that user anonymously. Uh, but we've also added some new stuff as well. So we've set up this um, state here, this uh, member variable called messages. And again, we use state from stencil so that whenever uh, this gets updated, our render function will run so that the template gets updated. Otherwise, uh, the template wouldn't update when the data changes. And so this is where we're going to store those documents that we're pulling in from Firebase. And so what happens here is in our component did load lifecycle hook, we call the watch auth state method that we set up. And remember how we could pass a handler function into that. So this is that handler function that we're passing in. And so when the auth state changes, this function is going to trigger and it's going to have that user information. And so what we're saying is if a user is uh, supplied, that means that the uh, user has authenticated successfully. We're going to set up this watch messages from the database service, which again is the exact same thing. We can pass in this handler function here that's going to uh, trigger every time there's any new messages or any changes. And what we're doing is just setting up those messages onto this dot messages. So they are stored uh, here with our, our state. Uh, and we also reverse those because the general idea behind what I've been creating is a, a chat service. So I'm pulling the last 50 messages and showing them in a reverse order. Uh, then down in our template, we are just mapping our messages uh, to display each message inside of an ion item. Uh, again, that's not really something that I'm aiming to explain in this video, uh, but I'll try to link to some other content that you can check out if you're not sure how this works with Stencil and JSX. And then I've also just added this button that's going to trigger adding a test message that will just trigger this, um, this method here. And basically that's going to call our add message method from our database service. And it's just going to create a, a dummy uh, test message here. So with all of that set up now, let's uh, jump into the browser and see if all of that uh, works. So we can run our application with npm run start and check out what's happening in the browser. Okay, so just a, a quick note. Uh, I did notice that uh, I swear this has changed because I don't think I did this uh, in the previous uh, video or for the pr uh, project that has worked on, but I did have to come into uh, here and just grab my web app uh, that I've set up in Firebase and copy this config code, um, which includes an app ID now. I don't know if that is new or if I just missed that before, but uh, in any case, uh, I had to make sure I had that information there and copied into my config. Uh, otherwise, it was complaining about not being able to connect to Firestore. So I don't know if I just missed something or if something actually has changed, but yes, make sure you do that. Uh, anyway, let's jump back into the browser now. Uh, okay, so let's first, uh, we'll test that login method. So basically, uh, if we click log in, that should be authenticating us anonymously. And then it's going to start watching our database for messages. As I mentioned, typically, you know, this would be on a separate page and then we'd come to this page. But uh, for the sake of the test, this is what we're doing. Uh, so we'll click on that. Uh, we can see the result of that over here uh, that we have signed in successfully. Uh, so let's see what happens when we click add test message. And you can see we immediately uh, immediately get this is a test popping up on the screen there. And so if we jump back into our console here and go to the database section again, uh, you can see now that we have this uh, messages uh, collection uh, created automatically. We didn't have to add that through here. It just created it because it didn't already exist. And we can see this document has been added there and you can see the various fields. We don't have a display name, so the author is showing as none. Uh, null rather. And so let's just add another one. See that that works. Jump back in here again. You can see that being added again. Let's add three more. And you can see uh, each time we add something, it is added here. And just for the sake of testing, let's try add a document through uh, this interface here and see if we can get it uh, showing up right away in our messages. So you can see here we have five messages there now. Let's just say add document. And we'll just have to copy the structure of our existing document there. Okay, so we'll save that. And you can see we have our document added there. So let's see if it's added uh, into here. And it is, so you see that just immediately popped up. 
uh, on the screen there without us having to refresh or anything like that. Uh, we can also see Josh there now because that was the display name which the others don't have. And we have a different avatar because the API I'm using is just giving a random avatar based on the user ID. And you might notice this little uh, error here. This isn't actually anything to do with what's going on with Firebase. This is, um, I think it's, uh, it's one of the extensions I have installed. I don't want to lay the blame on one without actually knowing, but that pops up for me all the time. So don't worry about that. Okay, so one final test to do, I guess, is just to refresh the application. Uh, see that we get our new uh, our existing data popping in and we do so that's all set up automatically as soon as we refresh the user's authenticated it's going to uh, use that watch message service or method from the database service and it just automatically calls in that data and then we can add whatever we like okay so this was a, a reasonably simple overview i guess of just hooking up a stencil js and ionic application to a firestore database getting some data going both ways storing some data pulling some data into our application. Uh, as I mentioned, there are, of course, other things to be concerned about. Obviously, the structure of your data is important. Uh, setting up those Firebase security rules is important. Uh, so I likely will do you know, another video, maybe another couple videos on some Firestore stuff if people are interested in that. Uh, if you are, let me know. Uh, if you like this video, please do feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.